this is the number four. And this is some code that I've written to send that number four between a client and a server. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, actually in this code, there is a bug that not everyone may see. You see, the number four is an integer type in this example, which means that it takes anywhere from four to eight bytes of memory to store the number four. A commonly overlooked problem for a lot of new programmers is the idea of endianness, which means in what order are these bytes stored? In the case of a little endian system, the least significant byte will be stored first, which in the case of our number four, the number four is put into memory first. In the case of a big endian system, the most significant byte is stored first, which means the zero will be stored first. So you may be asking, wait, how does this create a bug in our code? Well, consider the example here of my client server software. What if we sent the number four from a server that was little endian to a client that was big endian? Because of the order that the systems expect the bytes to come in, this will create some weird bugs where the number four will be interpreted in a different way between each system. Let's go check that bug out. Okay, so we're going to walk through our code and kind of describe where that bug is. If you're new to C, not a big deal. This code looks kind of complicated, but there's actually not that much going on. What we do here in the server is we have our socket, we create the socket, and then we bind that socket to a port. We listen for clients, and when we accept a client, we then send them our number. So here's kind of like where the core code of the program is, right? We have a number four in memory. We send the number, we tell the user we're gonna send it, and then we send the my number variable, and we send four bytes. Okay, so pretty straightforward. And then in our client software, exact same thing, we create a socket, we connect to that server, and then we receive from the server the my number variable, my number four, and then we print that number, right? So what we can do here is we can actually run the server, wait for a connection, and then in the terminal here, we're gonna run the client, we're gonna say, reading a number, my number is four. So the reason why this works and why there is not a bug in this case is because both systems are little endian. So if we actually go into our server here and we cat proc CPU info, you will see that we are running an Intel processor, an Intel core, this is my processor for my computer, pretty cool. Uh, but Intel is a little endian architecture, which means that it expects the least significant byte to come across first. So an issue will arise if we change one of the systems to another endianness or a big endian architecture. So what I've actually done here is I've compiled my client software to be used with MIPS. MIPS, if you don't already know, is a big endian architecture. So I can take this and produce the MIPS client binary and that MIPS client is going to run in Kimu as a big endian system. And that'll create a couple issues with our program here, right? If I go back and I run our server awaiting a connection, remember the server is going to send our client the number four in little endian architect or in little endian order, which is going to be weird for MIPS. So if I run the MIPS client, it reads the number and then it reads this large number. That is not the number that we sent it, but the reason that happened is because we mixed little endian and big endian. So let's go into the code and fix that. The way that we have to do this is we have to do what's called pack the number into network order. So network order is largely accepted to be the big endian order, which means that for, to make this number correct, we need to convert it into the network order before we send it. The way we're going to do that is we're going to say that my number is equal to host to network long of my number. So by doing this, we will prepare it to be sent in the network order. And then what we can do in our client software is we receive the number off of the buffer. And then we say that my number is equal to network to host long of my number. If you don't understand what those lines do, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it right now. So what this does, it takes a long size value and it converts it from the host endianness to the network endianness order. So in this case, on the Intel side, it'll take my number and convert it from little to big or network endians. On the client side, what this does is it says, take a long type and then convert it from the network order to the host order. So now we have two programs that regardless of what endianness they are, they convert all of their data to network order, send it, and then deconvert it. So let's watch that happen real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna GCC compile server again real quick. A couple warnings, don't worry about that. And then we're gonna MIPS convert and recompile all of our stuff. So if we run the server here, 
run the MIPS client, we get the number four backed correctly. So by doing network order as opposed to host order, we can actually ignore the differences in endianness that a program may have. Anyway, guys, as usual, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that sub button. And then also go watch this video on how negative numbers work in binary. If there's no negative sign in binary, how does that happen? Go, click.